Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all safe and well. We have a Ukrainian SU27 to build. This is a twin 50mm by XFly model. Let's go through the component parts. First off we've got the manual. Nice printed manual. Let's get that out of the way so we can see what's underneath it. Wings. Left to right, port and starboard. That's a good start. Servos already in. Horns, clevises. Ball link joints already connected up. No flaps. Then we come to a carbon rod. That's your wing spar. Then we come over to the tail plane and elevators. Now yes this is not an all moving tail plane as it is on the original. There they are again a left and right port and starboard. Then we come over to your fins. No rudders. I have had it said that a rudder should be included in this model when it was made. Bank and Yank works for me, I don't mind. Wheels. Now the main gear wheels are quite a nice size. It's the nose wheel that's a little small, I think it's one inch, but whether I use it them or not, I don't know. Bit of Velcro, obviously for your battery. Big nose cone, it's held on with a magnet. And we've got the tail piece. Now the tail piece just glues on in between the engine nasals. Then we have a bag just below that. Now the bag has a couple of push rods with ball link clevises on the end, five or six screws, some other little bits and pieces. We'll come across those as we're doing the build. And next to that is another bag with two ventral little fins which go on the underside at the back. Then of course we're not going to miss the fuselage. <laughs> Wings are screwed on, tail surfaces including the fins are glued on. So we've got to get the wire out. There we are. Easy. This has clips on it. No need for tape. We'll clip them up and push them in. Let's get the spar in there first. Push the wing onto the spar. Let it fall. Then I'm connecting these two together. Now the signal is the mustard coloured wire. So that's at the top. It's at the top on here. I'll join those two together like that and make sure it goes in so they clip shut around it. I'm going to turn the wing a bit, feed this wire in as I'm doing it. I'm going to push the spar as far as it will go into the wing and then push these wires in. And they connect up. Yeah, okay. okay. What I want to do is push that in. That's better. So push it in to get it inside there because otherwise the wire will coil and it'll get trapped like that. It doesn't. There you go. Let's do the back one first. Yeah, that's it. Right, let's put that in. Ring is on. Flip it over. Yeah. 
was very unpleasant. This really tightened up a lot and there's no way that's coming out again. This one went in okay. The problem is you have to really push the final wing together hard so there's just no way I could show it on camera. But they're done. Both wings are on. I know they're connected. I just want to make sure it's all okay. And I always do a servo test. There we go. That's centered. And it looks good as well on the wings. So our next job is the tailplane and elevators. Now they glue on. You can see where you have to apply glue and they fit in very nicely like that although there is some give so I think you're going to have to stand there while it sets now this is a good argument to use foam safe CA but it's also a good test for foam tack when it gets tacky it binds instantly and that's what we're going to do with this. But I want to prepare these services first because they're very smooth. And I'm going to use my blade, as I do on many occasions, and just do a cut. Crisscross cut. It's pretty rough up here as well. And on the sides. And that just allows the foam tack to ooze into those areas. Okay, I'm doing the same on the tailplane. Let's get the foam tack applied. I'm not applying it to this piece here. Or this piece, because that's where what I call ventral fin goes. We're only concentrating on this area here. Make sure you get it up that servo. And up the walls. Walls. <laughs> up the sides. And there. Okay, that will do for the first piece. I then use a cotton bud. And I just ease it all out and around. So it's evenly spread. Okay, so also the underside here of the servo. I'm going to apply that. Take it off, it's already stranding. Now I'm going to put foam tack on this piece. Make sure it goes everywhere. I'm going to spread that about. Good. Let's put it on. I could perhaps no. That's bad. That's it. That's as good as any CA. <laughs> wow. I love foam tack. Now what I'm not going to do is apply any pressure to that. We're just going to leave it there. Give it 30 minutes. <laughs> it's amazing how that works. The other beauty of course about foam tack is when it's wet, i.e. you first applied it, you can slide 
the piece around and make sure it's a good fit and still remove it so you know where it's got to go. Right, I'm going to leave that to set. Go and do some editing. I'm doing an unboxing which has surprised me considerably. I'm really impressed with it. Not the unboxing but I'm impressed with the product. <laughs> uh, we'll come back and we'll do the other side. Right, we're back. It's exactly the same process. Let's just get on with it. And now we're going to wait a minute, as we did with the other one. One minute, 37 seconds later. Right, we're going to leave that. Keep an eye on it, but we're going to leave that dry. Just realised as well, what I've done, you have no choice, but I've glued this piece onto this piece so if you need to take the EDF unit out you're going to have to break the bond down here and it's the same with that side that's the way it is following the instructions the next job is to put the fins in uh, I'm a bit reluctant to do that at this stage because I've got to turn it on its back and set the wheels up I'm going to put those in first and set the wheels up first so the wheels face outwards on this model. I don't suppose it matters which one I put in. Oh, that's tight. There we go. This one. Yeah, they're really quite hard to put in. Around. Give it some support under here. Oh, yeah. 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 Wheels on. Front wheel. Always fun. Don't pay any attention to the manual because the drawing's wrong for the wheel. The wheel goes this way with the spring at the back, not the spring at the front, how they've drawn it. These to go all the way through. And it is tight. There we go. Now that's good that it's tight because it won't fall out when I turn it over. Okay, this is going to be hard on camera, but basically what I have is a little aluminium piece which is going to go over that <laughs> and slot into the arm of the servo. Then from this way, it's got a grub screw that you tighten up. So let me get my big chunky hands in there. Yeah, it's a 1.5mm, so let's drop that back in there. It's not difficult, but it is important to make sure that the arm on that goes into the servo arm. And then, you can't see anything, I don't think, with my handle being the way. But I'm screwing that up as tight as it will go. That should be the steering sorted out. Right, sorry I didn't see anything except my big hands in the way. That's how it's done. That's the steering. It's not really a rudder because there isn't a rudder, but it's Mark rudder. So let me check that out. There's the rud. I've just connected that up and I just want to see the survey move. Yeah. And that's the steering. And that should be centred. I 
Searing's all right. So that is straight according to my servo checker. I can adjust it accordingly. I do just need to put a drop of foam tack on these C clips. You can see the C clip, but I just want to put a tiny drop just this side of the C clip. There. Right, that doesn't stop the wheel spin, but it stops that C clip from accidentally popping off. I'm going to do that with the mains, then we'll come back and do the fins. Right, so I've just finished putting foam tack on the C-clips for the mains. They all spin freely and the C-clips are secure. It would be a bit remiss of me if I was to now stick those fins on without having connected up the elevators and indeed stuck on the tail cone that goes in the middle here because that's all on the underside. You could also argue that I can glue these on as well and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So the manual says I should put the Z-Bend in the second hole. Which is there. And then these should just connect up. There. Oh, that was easy. Please, sir, can I have some more? These clevises, these ball link clevises here, they're really tight on the rod. Oh, that's not going. A lot of paint on it, I think. There we go. Yeah, very nice. I mean, not that I'm very good at it, but they feel level. Alright, let's see how the elevator behaves. Yeah, very good. Let's see, it's centered. Good. Right, to help speed this process up, I've already put hashings on this piece. That's going to go in there, like that. Let's get the glue on it. I'll be putting the glue on this piece. It's very good where they haven't sprayed the pieces where you need to apply glue. Uh, that looks a bit odd, but I'll... Cover this up anyway. Right, cotton bud, spread it about. Get every area covered where it needs to be. Okay, that's good. Don't want it on there, do we? Let's see if we can get some stringing. Let me know the drill. We wait one minute, then we whack them together. But this has gone together really well. Apart from one screw, one screw I've had a problem with, but it got in there in the end. It's not coming out, but at least it's gone in. Let's get this in here. Oh yes, lovely. You can feel it bite when you do it that way. Let's get it this way. Start with this one. I've already pre cut some hash marks on it. I've done a test fit. There we are. Good. 
glue it up. Making sure you don't get anything on this aileron. Well, that's got glue on it. This has got glue on it. This has got glue on it. Ooh, it's quite tight. Don't think I'll be able to get that off. No, it's already tightened up. Wow. So what we've got to do is make sure it's down. Whew. there. That's okay. That's all right. No, that's okay. Right, we're going to let those dry, keep an eye on them, make sure they stay level. In fact, I might even take it out of the cradle now, I don't mind it being nose up, as long as they stay level. Okay, yeah, I'll tidy it while that's drying. So now we stick the ventral fins on. One goes there, one goes the other side. You can tell which side because one's got a ridge that runs along this ridge here. Now there is some paint but I'm not bothering about that. I'm just gluing it on. Right. Take that off. Just sit on the inside. Jobs are good. Ones. I can't see that lasting with a belly land. In fact, there's no way that's going to last on a belly land. You'll have to cut them off. Right, we'll leave those like that just to dry. Be about half an hour. Now this is what I've done with this C of G. It is marked with a sticker, but it is a sticker, so it could have been put back here or back over there, who knows. So what I've done, I've measured 101 from where the wing joins the fuselage. Now the diagram is quite clear about that. Not there, here. Uh, I've measured 105 back as best as I can from there 105 which takes me to here I then basically put a rule there but swiveled it so it's cutting across the CG marker on the wing and it looks pretty straight I'll then come four centimetres out and put a cocktail stick in. If you come five centimetres out at that C of G mark, you're right on the spar that runs down this wing. I'll repeat it for the other side, whack my markers on, and then we'll try it out. Right, so we're back, and I've spent the best part of a day on this. Not that the whole assembly's been a problem, but getting the C of G to work has been. 
inside here it's been a complete madness to get it right uh, if anyone has done one of these please you know i'm going to take a look on youtube i'd love to know what they've done on the inside of this however after several sessions of trial and error i have determined the following these flat pack 4S's are useless, you cannot use them in that, so just forget it. The other type, the what I call the brick type 4S's, will work in it, obviously depending which one you use. So here's a Nanotech 2200, here's a Graphene 2200. Uh, I've got a Zippy Compact one here, I've got a Z here. Uh, you have to position them in different locations to get the correct C of G. What is it like in here? Well, it doesn't look that bad, to be honest. So this is what we're looking at. The receivers had to go right at the front. And that is, of course, the way they laid the wiring. Believe me, I've tried it at the back here. I've tried it shoving it down there uh, uh, that's the only location I could find that would give enough space to put a battery in without the wiring actually getting in the way now that's a 2900 I've got in there so it's nearly a 3000 I've only got one of those I have to get some more they're from Overlander here in the UK that fits nicely as do all the others but you have to move them different locations and the C of G on this I don't know if you're going to pick this C of G up it's quite hard on on camera to get this right especially with this pointy nose bit that's the C of G that's a hundred and one millimeters from this point here back and that's marked here on mine and it's approximately level where that says C of G actually. So that's pretty good. In fact, let me try something. Try C of G there. C of G there. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> that's on the sticker, slightly nose heavy. If you go to mine, it's not as nose heavy. So maybe mine's a couple of mil difference. I do like to show binds on camera. Shall we do one? Now before we power up and bind this you can probably see I've added an XT60, an EC3 to an XT60 adapter in this chain. I've got the basic aircraft set up. It doesn't matter what battery I've got in it. I'll take the nose off because it gets in the way. Let's bind it. Let's connect these up. Black to black. Don't know if it go upside down, does it? Nope. Okay. There's no noise. Let's see what happens. Binding. DFMX twenty two milliseconds. Telemetry. Bind complete. Right left aileron up down elevator steering right left everything is the correct way awesome there we are up down right left yep okay i just have to set all that up now a little longer than a few minutes later well this is all set up now not quite by the book but the movements in the book are very very small take the uh, aileron high rate aileron is just 10 millimeters both ways and the low rate is eight millimeters so i always go for high high low becomes my medium and then i add a low in so let's take a look at what I've done. There's not much, but aileron. So you've got your aileron, left, right. This is low, and it is 40% with 30% expo. You can see the movements there, and that 
is six millimeters. Elevator, 30% expo. And believe it or not, that is less. That is about four or five millimeters. The elevator is 40% as well with 30% expo. So let's move to medium. Aileron is 50% with 30% expo. Elevator is 50% with 30% expo. And they come in at six millimeters for the elevator and eight millimeters for the ailerons. And they're measured at the fuselage side of movement. Then we have the aileron high rate, which is 60%, 30% expo, and that gives it 10 millimeters of movement. If we look at the elevator, that's 60% as well, and it also gives it 8 millimeters of movement. So that's 8 on the elevator, 6 on the elevator, and then 5 on the elevator. We start at high on the ailerons, that's 10. Medium is 8, which they're saying is the low. And then I've added my own low in, which is 6. I've got the same setting on the rudder for the steering, because I've seen these can be quite responsive to the steering. So rudder, high rate is 100%, mid rate is 70%, and low rate is 50%. There we are. Time cleared. I've put three minutes on the clock, which will be the starting time for the Maiden. Then we'll check the batteries and things and see how we go from there. So this is basically done. And there we have the finished X-Fly model SU27 twin 50mm EDF. I'm looking forward to taking this one to the field. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay well. Please leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit that bell. You'll see all the videos I've got come up as I post them. Oh, and I use no hot glue in this build whatsoever. Cheers.